what's up everybody so we're out in the shop and today we are working on the kukri build now today's gonna be kind of experimental because i don't know exactly what finish we're gonna end up with on this knife i asked y'all on the last video for this knife what y'all think i should do do y'all think i should acid etch it and go dark with it do you think i should leave it sanded just like it is it was pretty much overwhelmingly go dark with it so i think that i'm gonna go that route i think it's gonna look really cool and even if i acid etch it and i don't exactly like the finish on it and i decide to sand it you need to acid etch it anyways because it's gonna make all of the the forge areas look even more pronounced because it's gonna make all of that area super dark so we're going to do that anyways. Now, I don't know if I'm going to just acid etch and do it that way or if I'm going to acid etch it and then polish the spine and uh, sand and polish the little mohawk area right there. Don't know exactly what I'm going to do yet, but I know that we are going to jump into it and get it knocked out. I'm excited about this. Let's get it. So we're going to start off by doing our maker's mark and I've already taped everything off and put my fingernail polish stencil on there and then drew my maker's mark onto it. And if you didn't know this, every single one of my knives that have a maker's mark on them, they're all unique to that knife. Every single maker's mark is done by hand uh, at this point. I, I don't have a stencil. Uh, eventually I'll get it you know, with a stencil company uh, and have them make me a stencil for this but for right now if you get one of my knives the maker's mark is a 100% unique maker's mark now this is just a q-tip dipped into salt and vinegar solution and then uh, the q-tip is held onto by the negative terminal on this battery charger you take the positive terminal and you attach it to the steel and then you just turn the battery charger to its highest setting and it works its magic it puts actually a really deep maker's mark in there it etches real well so i like this simple 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 setup now i wanted to start this off by going ahead and acid etching it so we acid etched it primarily to make all of the deeper indentions in the steel as dark as possible and then I also thought you know maybe I will see if I like the finish that comes from the acid etching and if I was gonna go ahead and just acid etch and stone wash this knife I would have probably been perfectly fine with it but I didn't really like the finish that much so I went ahead and decided okay we got to do some more hand sanding so I had to hand sand and then do some more hand sanding and anytime that you go through and do an acid etch on a piece of steel it puts pits basically throughout the whole entire thing it whenever you acid etch something it removes steel from the, the surface of the knife so where I had that finish all the way up to a 500 grit finish whenever you acid etch it it takes that finish away and makes it all dull again so I had to go through and spend another hour and a half hand sanding to get back up to that 500 grit finish. And really, it's just all about taking your time. And while I was doing this, I was thinking about, okay, what process can I do to this knife to get a real unique finish on this knife that will stand out and will actually match the design of the knife and I was thinking through the different types of things that I could do you know you do acid etching you do stone washing you just go ahead and sand it and buff it and then I thought okay what if we go ahead and do some sort of a mustard etch now the last knife that I mustard etched I put that zebra pattern on it and I really didn't think that this would look good with a pattern like that so I had to think how am I gonna do this 
So I grabbed the mustard, you know, had to go into the refrigerator and scoop it up and uh, grab the mustard and then thought, okay, how are we gonna do this? We're gonna, we're gonna just put some on the edge because I kind of want the first line. And what I mean by line is whenever you put mustard on a blade, everywhere where there's mustard, it's not gonna etch. What it's gonna do is it's gonna etch on the edge and the exposed steel. So I wanted to put the first line to where it ran down where the forged area was of this knife. So where the bevels met the forged area. I wanted that first line, if you wonder what I'm talking about, it almost looks like a hamon. So you just, you etch in a line all along that. So that's what I'm doing right here. You know, covering up the bevels completely with the mustard and then just kind of doing a little zigzag line all the way down where the bevels meet the, the flats that are forged. And then we take this and we put it in our vise and we let it sit there for about an hour, hour and a half. You know, the longer you leave this mustard on there, the better the etch. So you can leave it on there for an hour, two hours. Um, like I said, the longer you leave it, the better the etch. And it's not like acid etching where you're only gonna put it in there for 20 minutes. Now, I got that first etch done, and then I liked the finish that was on it, kind of patinaed the knife. So then I went ahead and just ran it all the way down the edge to give it the effect that you're about to see in the outro. Okay guys, let's go ahead and wrap up today's vlog. Now, this is of course the next day because I wanted to, you know, get all the etching done, get all that stuff set to where I wanted it. and. Uh, Man, I know that some of y'all are going to have mixed feelings about how the knife turned out. Y'all are either going to like it or you're not going to like it, uh, or you're going to be kind of on the fence about it. Now, whenever I set out to do this video, you know, I didn't know whether I was going to just acid etch it, if I was going to just sand it, or what exactly I was going to do. But then as we progressed through the video, you saw that I went ahead and did a mustard etch on it. And I love the way it looks. Now. This is the end result of this knife. So we went ahead and did one layer of mustard etch that went along the actual line of the hammer finish and then I etched the hammer finished area to give it a little bit of a darker look to it that fades in from here to a little bit lighter. And then we did that etch all the way along the edge right here it goes up into the actual harpoon section and it does meet right here at the tip. You can actually see it on this side. It meets right up here. And uh, I think that this just turned out absolutely awesome. But again, I'm interested to see what y'all think about it because this is nothing like what I originally asked y'all about. But, you know, the whole point behind me making these knives is me trying different things and different techniques and there is hammer finish, acid etch, mustard etch, uh, hand sanding, a lot of things that went into making this knife look the way it does. And even though it all looks like it's just hand sanded and everything, there is a patina over the whole entire knife for uh, rust resistance. So I'm just super happy about this knife. Uh, again, hopefully y'all really like this. Uh, I just, I can't be happier. You know, I've shown it to a few family members and they absolutely love it. And of course they all really like how it feels in the hand as well. But uh, man, I just, I'm excited about this one, so. Yeah, there we go. Now, when it comes to the scales, because I did kind of like a hybrid, uh, hand sanded, polished-ish look and darker treatment, 
I'm still gonna go with the black and the uh, kind of lighter burl wood on this. Now, I am gonna go ahead and do uh, boiled linseed oil on these scales. They're beautiful scales. Uh, I'm gonna do a boiled linseed oil so it will actually darken the scales up a little bit. Uh, whenever you do boiled linseed oil, it kind of intensifies the grain pattern on it and it does make the scales darker. So I think the overall look is gonna be pretty sweet. We're gonna do those scales with black uh, G10 liners on it, eighth inch thick liners, plus we're gonna do black G10 pins and it's gonna be a cool theme. I think it's gonna be awesome. But I'm about to start, you know, pairing those together and doing all the stuff for the next video, which is gonna be working on the scales and getting them attached to the knife. So we're gonna have that video coming out next. But guys, y'all tell me what y'all think about that. Again, I think it turned out awesome, but I'm excited to see what you think. Guys, thank y'all for coming by. If y'all would, give this video Thumbs up, share this video or one of my other build videos. And if you would, bottom corner, hit the subscribe button, turn on the notification bell so you get notified of the stuff that's coming up. Guys, thank y'all for coming by. Thank you for spending your time with me. Y'all have an amazing day. Y'all stay safe out there. I'll catch y'all next time.